Are you feeling like you're not getting the most out of your investment in Google Workspace? Maybe you set it up once or someone else set it up for you and you just don't know what all the buttons do and you don't feel like this is really working for you. Well, this video is for you. If that's the case, this is all about how small business owners get Google Workspace wrong and miss out on all of its powerful features. You see, it can really be a powerhouse for small businesses who want to grow, be successful, and build productive teams. But if you don't set up the basics right, well, you're probably missing out on what the best of the platform has to offer. Let's dive right in. I'm going to share with you my best tips for newbies to Google Workspace or oldies who've been around for a while, but want to make sure you get the most out of the platform. Now, Google Workspace is an incredibly versatile and powerful platform, but like all tools, you only get the most out of it if you know how to use it properly. Now, I've said for many years that if you buy Google Workspace and you don't learn how to use it, it's like buying a Ferrari and driving in the slow lane. You're basically stuck hampering the real value of what you've purchased. But if you go to a racetrack, you get some driving lessons and all of a sudden you're going around at a rapid pace and it's exciting, it's fun. You can go sideways around corners. I love car racing, can you tell? So with Google Workspace, let's go through some of the basics and I'm gonna go through some of the technical setup, but I'm also gonna go through like some of the add-ons and the fun stuff that you can really do and hopefully some things that you haven't heard of before. Now, many people set up Google Workspace themselves, either by clicking a button in Wix or Squarespace and having a Google account magically appear, or maybe you relied on someone else to get it set up for you. Could have been a web host or a you know website builder or maybe even your brother or your cousin. And that's okay, you've probably got email flow working, but usually people miss out on what an expert can help you with to get started with your account. Or maybe you missed out on the training. Well, that's why our company exists, to help you get the most out of your investment and this channel has heaps of videos, as well as this one, on helping you do just that. Now, one of the most common features we see completely missed out on and the most useful for business owners is delegated mail. Now, you need to go to your admin panel and switch on the ability to delegate mailboxes to other users. And once you've done that, someone inside your business can choose to let another person access their mailbox. Now, that might be someone like a personal assistant. You want to be able to read and respond to emails on your behalf. It may be a staff member going on leave who wants someone else to mind their inbox while they're away. Delegated mail lets someone see into an inbox, but not see your Google Drive files, not act as you outside of the mailbox, but they can read and respond to your emails only. The thing I love about delegated mail is it allows someone to effectively get access to manage and triage my email for me without me having to do that myself. The next thing that people tend to mess up is file sharing settings. Now, there's a couple of interesting settings inside of Google Drive, and one of which is what happens when you set up a default new file. Now, when you create a file in a business, if you have the setting set incorrectly, it'll automatically share it with everybody in the company. And we definitely don't want that. When we create a new file, we want it to be private just to us unless we choose to share it, either by clicking the share button or putting it into a shared drive. Now, there's more on that in other videos and how to set up your shared drives properly. But for now, I recommend you check the setting to make sure that you have the right file sharing enabled when new files are created. Another one goes for calendar entries as well. By default, across a business, all calendar events are shared in read-only fashion with everyone in the business. Now, if you're a small business and you've got less than 20 employees, I think this is a good default setting. But if you're a larger organization and you maybe don't wanna share the CEO's calendar with absolutely everyone in the company or the HR manager's calendar with everyone in the company, well, you may choose to put them in a different organizational group inside the admin panel and restrict the options for just them. Or you may decide, no, you know what, across the company, we don't want anyone to be automatically sharing their calendars with each other. You can choose to restrict that to only if someone's free or busy and not show the details of what's on someone's calendar. Sometimes some features are downright switched off and one of my favorites is Cloud Search that sometimes isn't even switched on or business owners don't even know about. Cloud Search lets you have one search place to find anything within a business, whether it's an email, a chat message, a document sitting in Google Drive, doesn't matter where it is, Cloud Search will find it. And the thing I love about Cloud Search is it's one place for everything. It makes it super simple for me and my team to be able to find anything that's stored in the Google ecosystem and I can do that from one place. 
Now, if you're in this bucket and you didn't set up Google Workspace yourself, or you did set it up yourself and you're not a technologist, well, you might be interested in coming to one of our boot camps. They are specifically tailored for Google Workspace administrators, helping you understand the basics of how you should set up shared permissions, get all of the apps and features switched on correctly, and just show you how to run the driver's seat of onboarding and offboarding staff, managing configuring options, and even some of the advanced features in Chrome policies that let you dictate how someone works in the Google ecosystem. I recommend one of those if you're new to Google Workspace. Make sure you're on our mailing list so you know when the next bootcamp or free live training is coming up. Now, a second big mistake that people make, and I don't want you to click off after I say this one, is getting your DNS right. Now, sometimes you've got to get it your hands dirty a little bit on the technical side of things, and we're going to go there just a little bit now, but please bear with me. DNS is your domain name settings, and for many setups in Google Workspace, it may have just been a click of one button to get it set up. Just because you're receiving emails into your inbox doesn't necessarily mean that everything is set up perfectly. If you've ever had an email that you've sent to a customer land in their spam mailbox, or maybe someone's trying Trying to send messages to you and you're receiving spam. Well, it could be related to how your DNS records have been configured. Now, your MX or mail exchanger records, that's what they stand for, are the first step in getting your email flowing. But there's other protocols that you need to make sure you get right to ensure your emails flow. You need to have SPF, DKIM, and DMARC policies deployed for your domain to make sure that mail is flowing efficiently. And you probably wanna get a techo to help you get those things set up if they're confusing or complete gobbledygook to you. There are some guides on our channel if you are a technologist and you wanna go through those step-by-step -step yourself. But my recommendation is to first do a check on your domain name. You can do that at itgenius.com forward slash DNS. And from there, you can choose and see what updates to policies need to be made in your DNS and maybe even chat to our team about getting some help with that if you want some help. Setting your DNS correctly ensures that no one can pretend to be you on the internet, and that's important. There are so many scams that are going around right now where people will send an email pretending to be one of your staff members asking for a payment to a critical supplier, which the name of you recognize, but may have different bank account details in this instance. Well, that's the easiest way for someone to get access to potentially a lot of money in your business bank accounts. And there is little recourse that can be done by authorities if you send money deliberately to the wrong person. Don't get caught out with the wrong DNS. If you run a report and there's issues with your domain, click the link below to get in touch with our team. Now, even with the right setup, sometimes people can get the adoption with their staff wrong. And what I mean by that is, sometimes your staff can come from Outlook over to the Google world, but keep some of their bad habits. You see, Google works different in a number of different ways as an ecosystem. You would know that, sure, a Google Doc allows multiple people to edit at the same time. They're the basics, right? But there's other ways of thinking about managing information, like tagging instead of putting things in folders that might be different to someone who's used to the Microsoft world. Quite often we see people who have come from Mac Mail or from Outlook into the Gmail interface treating labels like they're folders when they're technically actually tags. And what I mean by that is you can have one email in multiple labels. And so if you have a tagging based system, it can open up some different possibilities in how you store your email. The other one that most people really miss is just how powerful Google search is inside your Gmail mailbox. Not only can you use search stacking where you first type in someone's name or a variable and then you add a keyword to that and maybe you add a date parameter to that and you stack with different search queries on top of each other to narrow down your emails. But once you've learned how to either search stack or just use the advanced search dropdown, well, you can potentially completely negate the need for labels or as you may be using them, folders. That might fry your noodle. You don't need folders for emails anymore. Well, if the search is that good, why would you? When you learn how to use the basics of search, well, you can get so much more done. And this is something that people often miss when they're new to the Google world. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how to use the actual apps of Google Workspace and specifically how to get more productive in your inbox, we have a free training section on our website. You can click through to that and you or your team can access any of our training courses for free online and work through them at your own pace. One of our most popular courses is Seven Steps to Inbox Zero. And I promise you, you watch that 45 minute course and you will be an absolute email whiz. Every day, you will get your inbox down to zero. And by the end of the course, it'll be at zero too, even if there's 10,000 emails in your inbox right now. They are principles that are timeless and I've taught these to tens of thousands of customers who email me every week and tell me that they've got success and their time back with their emails. Check those free courses out if you're interested in learning more.
Now, my fourth tip here is about really getting deep into the Google ecosystem. There are different ways of doing things, as I mentioned earlier, but some of these are just learning what apps are actually there. For many of us, we spend a lot of time on email when we could potentially be using chat for our internal communications with team members or even potentially contractors or people outside of our business as well. We like to set up a chat room or spaces as they're called in the Google world for each different functional area of the business. And we've even got some fun ones as well like a team water cooler and announcements and shout out rooms where people can enjoy some non-work banter and chit chat. Now, we love using chat instead of email for our internal communications because email is a pretty formalized method of communication. And for many, it is just slower to send an email to someone inside the company when you could maybe achieve the same communication more quickly with an instant message. Use Google Chat as much as you can. If you're the kind of business that's still using Slack or maybe you're using Messenger or WhatsApp for your business messages, give Google Chat a go. And I've got other videos on the channel on how to set up Google Chat and get it running well for you and your team. If you're collecting data, most of us go to Google Sheets and that's an obvious choice, but there's a smarter way of actually collecting data from you internally and maybe from your customers as well. Using a Google form instead of straight data into a spreadsheet can help you to make sure your data is actually uniform as you're collecting it. A Google form link can go to pretty much anyone, even if they've not got a Google account and they can upload information, they can even share pictures or images if they need to. They can apply to a job, they can request an invoice, anything that you need to do to collect data, you can do with a form. And some of the great things about Google's integrations mean that you can get that data to talk to pretty much any app or system once it's arrived in the spreadsheet and you then wanna share it somewhere else. If you'd like to get started with automations, connecting things like a new response in a form to maybe your website or to to a Google chat room to give you an alert that someone's filled out the form. Well, our team can help out with those kind of automations using a tool like Zapier. You can even get started on that yourself. If you're reasonably techy, well, you can set up most data flows and automations in the Google world just by using Zapier's built-in tools. Ideally, you're using Google Workspace as a platform and a foundation for your business data management. That means that whatever app you're using, you've got your data safely secured in Google's ecosystem. Now, I can't talk about the best Googly features without highlighting Google's version history. You see, with most Word documents or anything in the Microsoft world, if you've been working on a doc for an hour or for three hours, sometimes the app crashes and you lose your autosave and you know, you've got to start that document from scratch. And we've all been there at some point in our lives. Now, with Google, because it runs in the cloud and in the browser, every single keystroke you make is automatically being saved to the cloud in near real time. It means that there is a version of every single change that's been made to a document. And you can roll back through any one of those versions like a time machine. You can restore data from a previous version or just cut and paste the information that you need and bring it to the latest version of the document. And I absolutely love this feature. The next time you're in a Google Doc, hit the clock icon and that's gonna help you rewind to previous versions of the document showing you who changed what, when. And the crazy thing is this even works offline. Did I mention offline? I should have mentioned offline. Make sure you've got offline access switched on in your Gmail and also in your Google Drive so you can access your documents from wherever you are, even if you don't have an internet connection. Number five on my list is security and compliance. And again, don't disappear. Security is important. I'm gonna make this as unboring as possible. There's a couple of really key things that everyone gets wrong in Workspace that once you switch them on, I promise you will reduce 90% of the risks in your Google Workspace account. Number one is enforcing two-factor authentication, not just setting it up on your account, but enforcing it across your domain. You do that in the admin panel and the security section, and once you've switched on two-factor authentication and given your team a grace period of maybe a week, let's say, to let them get enrolled, well, it means that no user in your business, even new users in the future, will be able to log in just with a password without a second factor device also added to their account. This is security best practice and will stop pretty much most phishing attempts using an existing email address that has to connect to a Google account. Because once you go and sign in, you're gonna be asked for a second factor authentication token and usually people will scrutinize where they're signing into at that point. And if someone else gets your username and your password, well, they can't get in without your mobile phone or other two factor device as well, which keeps you safe. My next tip is group-based permissions, and I've got other videos covering exactly how to set that up in shared drives to make sure that you're not just willy-nilly sharing things with individual accounts, which can be forgotten or can be missed when you're offboarding staff members. You wanna make sure you have that set up correctly, and I recommend going through our guides to get started on that. That one's pretty easy for anyone, whether you're a techo or not, and I recommend you start on that immediately. 
While we're talking about sharing, if you haven't implemented shared drives and not just shared folders inside your My Drive, if you haven't implemented shared drives, which is the business version of Google Drive, well, that's a great place to start to increase your security. Google shared drives give you the ability to restrict the certain types of things that people can do inside a drive. Like, can they upload but not delete? Can they change users? Are they able to maybe just have read-only access but nothing else? All of these make sense for different groups of staff, whether it's a contractor who just works for you sometimes, whether it's a full-time staff member, or whether it's someone outsourced, or maybe even someone who's a accountant or an advisor to the business that you need to get access to your data, but you wanna control how that access works. Now, if you're feeling a little shaky in this area of the business and you wanna improve your security, well, you might be interested in an audit with our team. We have a basic complimentary audit that we do for anyone in any place in the world, just book a consultation with our team and they'll be able to help you get started. Or if you're interested in a comprehensive audit, we have a paid service where we'll go through each one of your security settings inside Google Workspace and give you a formal report on our recommendations there. Now, if you're interested in getting some help or getting started, we have a quick fix service, which is an instant IT support service. Our team are available during Australian and US time zone hours and allow you to get started with a simple chat message to our team and they'll jump straight onto your problem immediately if you contact us during business hours. Our premise your product is called concierge and that is an all you can eat training support advice consultancy and security monitoring solution for your google workspace and your small business tool set so if you're interested in an it partner who can help you along your journey with google workspace click the link down below and we'll be very happy to help